So I was playing Resident Evil Revelations, or Revelations, and getting ready to do a review on that, and the entire time the game reminded me of, in my opinion, not one, but the most criminally underrated video game of all time. And that is Cold Fuel. Now, I know when it first came out, everyone was saying it's just a Resident Evil 4 knockoff. And in a way, sure. But playing through Resident Evil 2, 3, and then Revelations, which takes place on a boat, it really was bringing up a lot of memories of a game that, quite frankly, is superior to Revelations in every way. Uh, now, right, graphically, Resident Evil Revelations is better than this game, but not by that much, because it originally came out on the 3DS, and then they updated, uh, ported it to the PS3, Xbox 360, and then they ported it to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One. So, it originally was developed on 3DS graphics, which Let's be honest, is it that much better than an Xbox or PlayStation 2 system? So, graphically, it's not that much better. But, there was just so much about this game, Cold Fear, that was amazing, mind-blowing to me. And, it sometimes feels like I'm the only person that felt that way with this game. I mean... So, the initial setup. The story is very simple. Distress call set out on a Russian whaler, okay, a whaling ship. Coast Guard gets the call. They fly out there, drop the protagonist, Coast Guard guy, onto the ship, and basically, soon after he gets on the ship, shit's hit the fan, and he now has to stay alive. There's the entire premise. There's a couple of more caveats in it, but for the most part, that's it. It's simple, it's effective, all right. Graphically, Coldfield was an amazing looking game, all right. I mean, you know, even by today's standards, still holds up pretty good. The two locations you're in, the whaling ship and the oil rig, they were overloaded with atmosphere. They felt like characters of their own. And the loading in between each room was so brief that it kind of felt like two open worlds you got to run around and backtrack through. Very rarely did you come across a room you couldn't go back into again. I mean, usually it was a room with a boss fighter. That, that was it. The thing that really impressed me was how the game was designed. So, for instance, your weapons. You get a pistol, submachine gun, grenade launcher, shotgun, some kind of chemical dart thing, and I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure you get an AK-47. And then that's it. Very simple. To the point. Not None of this... 25 different pistol variants of weapons like you got in Resident Evil 4. What were they thinking with that? Just everything was a damn pistol. Pistol, 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 pistol. Pistol! The greatest survival horror game of all time. Pistols are us. Resident Evil 4. This game went about its weapons logically. Hey, give you a pistol. Nade launcher for the heavies, shotgun for crowd control, assault rifle for rapid firing, a submachine gun if you go out of your way, and a chemical thing to have some fun making the zombies go in a different direction. And that's it. And all the weapons, none of them were throwaways. A lot of games you get a pistol and the pistol's useless after the first level. No, pistol was still effective. Final level boss. But that wasn't the only thing that was great. Another amazing thing was how they handled ammo. Now, most games, 
ammo's everywhere. Resident Evil 4. You shoot a zombie, there's this big beam of light that comes from it that's usually red. And then, oh, this zombie was carrying a box of pistol ammo for some reason. Okay? And, um, that zombie over there was carrying a box of machine gun ammo for some reason. And why do all of these zombies carrying boxes of ammo? I mean, it's to help you with the game, but I mean, it takes you out of the experience. In Cold Fear, guess how you get ammo? There's a couple of times you come across an enemy with a gun and you fire him and he drops some ammo, but this is like maybe twice in a seven to eight hour long game. No, how you get ammo is you have to go to an armory. There's one armory on the ship and on the oil rig. You have to go to that armory to reload. And then when you run out, you gotta go all the way back. Now yeah, it's some needless backtracking, but it extends the game a little bit and it's realistic. I'm off ammo. I need to go back to where there's ammo. Logic. Not this, oh, I just took down five enemies and they're loaded with ammo. When does that happen? Like, ever. And you know, as a gamer, I never noticed this until I played Goldfield. But, you know, the one thing that completely sold me on this game, that was just absolutely amazing, was how they handled zombies. You see, in Resident Evil, as I've learned recently, you have to shoot a zombie in the head ten times if you're playing the game on normal. Five times if you're playing on easy, which it's like, okay, it's still ridiculous, but I can live with it. In Cold Fear, let me tell you about my first account with the zombie. So, I'm checking out the ship, I'm looking for any signs of life, I find a body with something on it. I pick that something up, by behind me stands up. It's a freaking zombie. I turn around. I fire five times into its chest. It falls down. I figure, okay, it's dead. Keep in mind, I played this over ten years ago, so I didn't know what I knew about zombies now. But so I'm assuming it's dead. I go back around to get the thing off the guy. And I hear a moaning. I turn back around. This thing's on top of me. It kills me. So, reload. Try again. Go to the guy. Zombie stands up. I turn around. I shoot him five times. I wait. He gets back up. I'm thinking, I just shot him five times. How's he getting up? I take my time aiming. I aim. I shoot him once in the head. Goes down. Dead. Come to find out there's only two ways you can kill zombie in cold fear. One is the amateur ver amateur method. Fill it up with ammo until it falls down, run up, stomp its head, stomp its brains out. Or the professional method, number two, aim for the head, shoot once, zombie's dead. Perfection. I have this is going to be the saddest statement you ever hear me make about a horror video game. I have never come across another zombie video game that has done this. Not one. Not one zombie game has ever done this system since. I mean, it just blows my mind that such an eloquent system has never been replicated. Not once. I mean, okay, maybe there's some kind of variation with this, with dying light, but not this simple, not this perfect. You shoot him in the head, 
or you fill them up with ammo until they fall down and then you stomp on their head. It is perfect. And when I experienced this, I knew this was going to be an amazing video game. But the sad fact of the matter is that everyone sees this as a ripoff of Resident Evil 4. A knockoff. Yes, it was clearly trying to capitalize on the success of Resident Evil 4, but you know what? It did a better job than Resident Evil 4 in almost every way. It handled zombies better. Its bosses were better. Okay? The only aspect of Resident Evil 4 that was better in this game was the scene with the regenerators. Okay? That was amazing. And to my bewilderment, Capcom has never recreated that scene, ever. They've never had those enemies in any other Resident Evil game. They've never... You're one truly creepy, scary enemy, and you never use it again. Now, I'll admit, I was not scared during this game at all, but I was never scared during any of the Resident Evil games either, and I still had fun with those. Okay? So, why does this not get the praise it deserves? Well, came out after Resident Evil 4. That's it, that's the only reason. The most criminally underrated video game of all time. Cold Fear, because everyone just saw it as a Resident Evil 4 clone. It's not. It, PC-wise, graphically superior. Weapon-wise, superior. Zombie-wise, superior. Atmosphere-wise, apart from the opening village in Resident Evil 4, superior. Hands down. But yet, you know, Resident Evil 4 is the greatest survival horror game of all time with its many many pistols and what's sad about this it's not backwards compatible or anything unless if you have a PC or a PlayStation 2 or original Xbox you're not playing this game What a waste. So criminally underrated. I, I just can't stress this enough. If you get a chance to play this, do it. Do it. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the trailers I've shown you during this video. You can't deny that it doesn't look good. Yeah. So, do yourself a favor and play this criminally underrated gem that has one of the greatest zombie mechanic systems ever designed, and no one has tried to recreate it. In almost 20 years, no one's tried to recreate it. It's shameful. It really is. I'm... I'm Chris, you know the thing. You know that's all. Go get this game and see what a criminally underrated game this really is.